Hi everyone, Kate from Crocoblock is here and welcome to this new video dedicated to Jet Engine 3.0 update. I know that some of you have already had a chance to check out its amazing features and test them on your staging websites, and maybe, maybe even some of you have already implemented them in your projects. And if so, please let me know in the comments below what you think about this update. And also, don't forget to submit your websites on our Made with Croco page, you know, just to inspire other Others with your masterpiece and also to get on a roll for the side of the week, side of the month or side of the year batch. So with that being said, please feel free to grab yourself some tea, coffee or whatever and hop into this overview to find out the latest information about Jet Engine plugin. So the first thing I want to talk about is, of course, Jet Engine Maps functionality. Its code has been changed drastically, which actually allowed us to add a couple of new, cool and really long-awaited features, such as map providers, map meta field for meta boxes, option pages, CPDs, etc., um, location query and user geolocation filter. So in order to get access to all of these features of Maps functionality, first you have to enable Maps listings module in the Jet Engine plugin dashboard. Once done, you'll find a new section for map settings in the dashboard menu and yes guys, this is the place where the magic begins. As you can see, here in the settings section, there are two types of providers you get to configure map provider and geocoding provider. Let's start with the map provider. This option allows you to pick one of three different providers for front-end rendering of the map. Google Maps, Leaflet Maps or Mapbox. So basically this simple select feature provides you with more flexibility in your projects, thus making your website building experience much more enjoyable. Just please keep in mind that Google Provider requires an API key and Mapbox requires an access token for proper functioning of the map on your website. As for the Leaflet, you can go with it right away as no additional setup is required. So talking about the geocoding provider, which basically takes the addresses and converts them into the geographical coordinates, which then can be used to place markers on map or position the map. Here, we also decided to broaden the list of options for you. Now you have four geocoding providers to choose from. Google, OpenStreetMap, Photom and Bing. Don't forget that both Google and Bing require API keys and there are instructions on how to obtain them in the documentation of each of the service. Another little but great addition to the Jet Engine Maps listings module is a brand new Metafield type map, which works perfectly fine with CPTs, meta boxes, option pages, etc. And what it does, it actually allows you to choose the needed location right on the map. Just like that. When adding this meta field to, let's say, a CPT, you have an opportunity to set up the map height and decide in which way you'd like the values entered in the map to be stored in the database. As a string with location latitude and longitude separated by comma, as an array with location latitude and longitude, or as location address. A possibility of filtering posts within the user's location radius. Honestly, guys, this feature has been requested for quite some time already. And finally, we managed to implement it within this update, which I'm pretty sure made a lot of you much happier. So this GeoSearch functionality works in conjunction with the JetSmart Filters plugin, the new user geolocation filter in particular, and a Jet Engine Query Builder feature. So if you want to implement it in your projects, please be aware that these two things are must-have. So how does this feature work? 
Well, basically, it requests access to user's current location and then shows him only those posts in the map that are located nearby. And you get to choose and set up the radius of the distance between the user's current location and available posts on the map straight on the backend in the GeoSearch query. So let me show you a brief example of how I set things up. Just please keep in mind that I will not go into detail here right now because this is just an overview video, but if you'd like to watch a comprehensive step-by-step -step tutorial on this topic, please let me know about it right in the comment section below, okay? So first, I created a very simple post type and added a map meta field just to test it out and see its benefits in action. Then, I added some posts of different branches for the Cross Zone Fitness Club chain and of course set the location for each of them via the newly created map meta field. Then, I built a very simple map listing item that's got the dynamic image widget for the post thumbnail and two dynamic field widgets for the post title and a human readable address of the gym. After that, I went straight to the Jet Engine Query Builder to create a map query, which is also very simple. All I had to do is choose the post type this query to be applied to, select the post status publish, because we want to query published posts that users can see, right? And then, way at the bottom, I opened a new world of GeoSearch for myself. So the first thing we see here is the select location option. It allows you to set up the default location of the map around which the posts will be shown if user refuses to share his geolocation. Then, as for the address field, here's where we need to place the meta field key with all the information about the location of each gym and it can be easily found either in the cpt settings or in the post itself and i'd suggest copying and pasting it just to avoid any spelling mistakes okay and now moving on to the distance and units Here's the place where you literally set the distance between either the default location or the user geolocation and the nearby services, businesses, posts, etc. So, for example, right now it is set to 150 kilometers. Then I created a new filter for user geolocation, and as you can see, the setup here is like super short. And of course, I didn't forget about a separate page for the actual map. So first, I placed a map listing widget to the canvas, chose appropriate listing for the map, added address meta field key, set the map height to 900 pixels and post number to 10. Then in the marker section, I added the icon from the library and didn't forget to set the custom query because this is a very important step. It gives you the opportunity to apply recently created map query to this widget. And last but not the least, I added a user geolocation widget to the map and applied this filter for the Jet Engine Maps provider. And now let's see what this quick setup resulted in on the front end. Let's open a corresponding page in the incognito window just to see what the map is going to be like if we don't share our geolocation first. Okay, so as you can see, it shows only one gym in Warsaw, as there are no other fitness centers in the radius of 150 kilometers from the default spot on the map that we set up earlier. Now I will share the access to my location data for the site and see what happens next. Okay, now we are in a completely different part of Poland, right? And as we can see, there are three fitness centers available in the region. And now let's try to change the distance to, let's say, 650 kilometers. Okay. Reload the page and there we go. 
Now we see other gyms available not only in Poland, but in other countries as well. Yes, guys, it is that easy. Yes, we continue to create a strong compatibility between Jet Engine and WordPress Block Editor, as there are some clients of ours who tend to move away from Elementor and other page builders for the benefit of speed and performance of the Gutenberg Editor. And guys, please don't worry, we're not shifting to the Gutenberg, we're just making CrocoBlock available to all clients. So dynamic visibility here works in a pretty much the same way as in Elementor. To access this feature, you need to select the block you'd like to hide or show, click on the little eye icon, enable the feature, and set up the visibility conditions according to your needs. Another outstanding feature that is now available for your use is the possibility to create new listing items straight from the listing grid widget in the Elementor. Just place the listing grid onto the canvas and click on Create new listing item. Choose the source, in my case it's Posts, then select the post type and give your listing a name. Don't forget to save the changes and there you go! Now you're free to create the listing item you like. Let's set the listing width to 300, search for dynamic image widget and to drop it onto the canvas, then search for the dynamic field widget and drop it onto the canvas as well. This one will go for the post title and let's place another one for the address. OK, update the changes and go back to the Listing Grid page. Simple as that! Another thing that you guys have been requesting is the possibility to add a taxonomies, built-in taxonomies, the same way as you can do it in post types. So here you will find a nice little switcher for that purpose. Just please keep in mind that you have to be very careful with changing anything in here, because these changes might affect the proper functioning of other plugins, the taxonomies of which you are editing. As a part of improving and optimizing the performance inside the builder, we try to move all the query options to the one place, which is Query Builder. So now, query builder options inside listing grid are marked as legacy and you can disable them by clicking on this button. Guys, we know that changes are sometimes not an easy thing, but we highly recommend moving on to using query builder instead of the query options here in the grid settings. Also, there were a lot of requests to add context and fallback fields to the macros inside the Query Builder. So, there you go! Here, we added Advanced Settings option, where you can choose the context this macro will be applied to and set a fallback in case there is no data to output. And last but not the least, we didn't forget about our advanced CrocoBlock users and added a possibility to configure public REST API for relations and display meta field and option values in REST API too via the Show in REST API feature. It can be easily found in the bottom of the meta field settings section. This toggle has been added to a pretty much every meta field type and now allows to get the information from the meta field or update it with WordPress REST API. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope it was informative and useful. And if so, don't forget to give it a like. Also, share your thoughts about this update right in the comments below and contact our support team in case of any issues. Join our friendly Facebook community and stand with Ukraine. Cheers, guys!